Hey guys, I want to take a few minutes to talk about SEO and how it can help your business uh, in tremendous ways. SEO means search engine optimization and it's how we get your website linked to the top of Google searches, Bing searches, any search engine. Um, and really you can't afford not to be doing it. So if you're not spending any money right now on SEO, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate that you really can't afford not to. I'll take one of our clients in particular and just talk about the success story and, and what that looks like. Um, and, and how we we managed to get his business to number one on Google searches. Um, and there's some misconceptions in the, in the world of SEO. So this video is for business owners for sure, but it's also for tech guys who do SEO for companies. So if you're uh, in marketing or if you're in PR or if you're in, uh, in technology, if you're, if you're in web development, this is for, video is for you as well. So uh, Local Steamer is a seafood market on Panama City Beach, Florida. And we were able to steal the number one spot within three short weeks. Now I'm not saying that's gonna be the case for every single business that follows uh, my advice, but this is just one tremendous success story. It's, it's extremely uh, interesting because there were 20 or so competing businesses that have been around for a long time, some over 20 years. So for a new business to come in and steal that number one spot, in that short amount of time, we must have done something right. So I'm just going to talk about what we did and what you can do for your business uh, to have to improve your SEO. Because some some businesses are still, uh, especially like large businesses, um, there's been a there's been a attempt to like learn Google's algorithm and then build your site around or build your business model rather around that algorithm because there is so much value. I mean, it's literally worth hundreds of thousands of dollars just for my little my local client in Panama City Beach. At the end of the day, that first place spot is gonna be worth several hundred thousand dollars. So, um, so there, there's this huge attempt to just kind of follow the algorithm, right? To chase Google's algorithm and to try to game it, to manipulate it. Now, there are some base level stuff we're going to do as a web developer, and I'm going to talk about those things, um, but most of your money shouldn't actually be spent in web development, and I'll talk about that as well. What I mean by trying to game the algorithm or manipulate the algorithm, let's just say that right now, Google's algorithm, which they're changing all the time, right? They're, they're on a constant mission to not allow uh, clever tech people to game their algorithm. What does that mean? Let's say right now, their algorithm favors H1 tags. So an H1 tag is like a heading text on a web page, the big bold text on a web page, right? And let's say right now, their algorithm favored it for whatever reason, just for the sake of discussion. Well, that means if somebody figured that out, what they would do is they would create a software program, just a robot, to automatically create H1 tags for clients. And then you can buy their software for 80 bucks and your website will be at the top of search engine results just because you bought the software for 80 bucks. And all the software did was re recreate thousands and thousands of H1 tags for your keywords, for your optimal search phrases. Here's the problem. That's not a real representation of the most valuable business in the market. And Google's, we're just gonna pick on Google, but being all of them are, they have the same goal. Their long-term goal is to make it so that their search results reflect what the market actually would vote. So the most valuable business in the industry is the one they want to be at the first place spot, regardless of H1 tax. Okay, so knowing that's Google's goal, instead of chasing the algorithm, we should chase their goal. Right, we should have the best business with the most value and reach the most people and bless the most people. So my approach to SEO is three main parts. And we're gonna talk about how we did this with, with local steamer. We're gonna we're gonna pick on them. If you guys haven't been there, go check it out on Front Beach Road. A little advertising plug for my brother Dave with Local Steamer. It's an awesome place. You guys will love the steam shrimp. Get some. We're gonna talk about these three principles applied to local steamer, and then you can use them for your own business. Okay, so this is what we did. The three-prong approach is what I'm calling it. Step one is vital. All the three steps are vital. You gotta do all of them. But we, step one is where we start. Where we start is a useful website. Repeat that again, a useful website. 
most websites, most of my clients right now, it's not that they didn't have a website and they needed one. They had a useless website. They had a website that didn't really have any reason for people to come to it. It might've had information on it. It might've been like an electronic business card, but it didn't, it wasn't an actual tool. It wasn't an actual piece of the sales process, right? It didn't actually accomplish much for the business. That's a problem. So step one is building a useful website and it should be useful on both sides of the equation. We should be burning the candle from both ends, cost and demand, right? Supply and demand. Supply side might be uh, it, the website's actively used by your employees and your management team, right? And we got you got to have that. You can't just have your website being an electronic business card. It's got to be a tool that is a, an extension of your business. It's an electronic extension of your business. So websites are changing all the time. Ten years ago, people totally missed the point of websites, and they built. They just put a whole bunch of information on a page, and they thought ah, it's done. People can find us now online, and that's changing really quick. Okay, so make your website useful. Now in that same step, we're going to cover the technological bases, which are things like nice page titles, H1 tags, uh, paragraph text, rich content, video content, um, well labeled pictures, well, you know, alt tags, tool tips, uh, hidden, hidden tags, hidden H2, H3 tags. Um, we're going to cover all the basics when we build the website. So those are things that you have to have. You have to optimize for key phrases, right? You have to have seafood market Panama City Beach in several different ways on your site so Google's algorithm can pull that. So we're not going to totally ignore Google's algorithm, um, right? We're, we're going we're gonna to make sure that's a fundamental, foundational step. But like I said, the site has to be useful. This is crucial, guys. The site actually has to create value for both customers and for the cost side, the supply side. Okay, that's step one. Now, now that we have that, we're ready for step two. Step two and step three are really the same step, but I've broken them up just so we can talk about them because they're both so crucial. Step two is social media. If you don't pay somebody right now to manage your social media or if you don't spend several hours a week managing your social media, you're missing out on tremendous opportunity. A lot of my clients, when I when I come to them, their last Facebook post was last year or in January, six months ago, five months ago, a week ago. Guys, that is never gonna cut it. Your social media, it can't and it can't be just doing the work, plug and chug, plug and chug like drab work, right? It, it can't just be boring, monotonous social media interaction, posting pictures now and then, reminding people. I mean, that's great but your social media has to be vibrant. It has to be alive. There has to be value created for your customers through social media. Find your customers where they're at and create value for them. Give them incentives to share links. Give them incentives to come into the shop. Give them incentives to bring parties, to do fundraisers, whatever it is, whatever kind of establishment you have, you need to mold your social media strategy to your customers and to your potential customers. So social media needs to be a full frontal attack on every main social media network. You can't neglect some because you're missing out on business there. Now the strategy for sure, it's better to do one really well than a bunch of them really crappy. Okay, so so if you can't if you don't have the resources to do all of them well, just do one of them really well. Facebook, just start there and do it really well. But ideally, the long-term goal is to do all of them really well. Okay. Social media is just one more way to drive people to your website. The number one driver of SEO, this is crucial. If you're writing, if you're taking notes, write this down, tech guys, more than anything else, the number one driver of SEO are actual people, individuals coming and using the site consistently and often. Individual IP addresses logging on and using the site. That is going to drive SEO. That's the real meat and potatoes of it. You can have no H1 tags, none of that stuff, but if you have millions of people coming to your site every day, you're gonna do well in your search phrase categories. Okay, so so we need to get people to the site. So number two, the, remember one, we're gonna build a site that's useful. So when they come to the site, they're likely to come back and often and regularly, right? Because it's actually useful. There's a point of the site. It's optimized on mobile. It's easy to get to on the cell phone. It's easy to get to on the tablet. 
it works well on all browsers, right? It's gotta be a useful site. Then step two, let's, let's utilize social media. Let's make it fun and interactive and engaging. Let's bring people to the site through social media, funneling them to the site, right? Again, driving the amount of traffic that actually comes to the site, that's step two. And then step three, this is what I don't hear any SEO guys really talk about much, uh, maybe just the ones that I read or, or, or watch videos on, and they all have good information. Um, but this one is like, I feel like it's just neglected and it's arguably the most important thing you can do. And it's marketing, it's PR, it's on the ground marketing, it's, it's in the shop marketing, it's getting people, uh, new customers and existing customers, but getting people to go to the site in person. So this might be guerrilla, guerrilla style marketing where you're going out and handing out flyers. It might be uh, radio advertising. I'm not, I'm, again, I'm not promoting a particular kind of marketing. Maybe it's a billboard. Depending on your area and your location and your target market, figure out what's the best kind of marketing and then market. Get P And then in your marketing campaign, right? I don't want to leave this out. I think it's obvious, but in your marketing campaign, you have to drive people to the website and don't do gimmicks. Don't do, don't, don't, don't do sleight of hand. Don't, don't, don't do cheap stuff, right? Um, I hate the campaigns, buy one, get one half off, right? It's so, it, don't nickel and dime people. Do advertising that people can't afford to pass up. Make them an offer they can't refuse. If you're a restaurant owner and you give away a free appetizer and that person came in and they got a free appetizer and they walked out and they didn't buy a drink, they didn't buy a meal, all they got was that free appetizer, you did not lose in that situation. It is so important to understand because you gave them amazing service, your appetizer was delicious, now they've walked in your store, they've had some of that delicious product, they're a future customer, they're a word of mouth customer, they're at least gonna tell 10 other people about the free appetizer, it will eventually always pay for itself. But get people in your store in a non-gimmicky way, right? Through your marketing, make them offers they can't refuse. Because all of this is built on the fact that you have a good product, that you love people, that you create an amazing environment for them to come in and be blessed. If you don't have that, just go, go out of business, right? But all of this talk, all three points are assuming that, almost taking it for granted, that you have an amazing product, you love people, and you're creating an environment where they're blessed. To recap, build a useful site that people actually need to use because it creates value on supply side and demand side. Number two, social media, engage with fun, interactive, um, thrilling social media, not boring, don't, don't suck at it. And then number three, market, find creative marketing to, to drive people to your site. Those three pieces will absolutely bless you in the realm of SEO and you'll be moving up on the search ranks. And then, and like I said, to give you some numbers, my uh, buddy at Local Steamer, thousands of people are driven to his site every month because of that number one spot. So that's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars at the end of the day. So what's it worth? What are you willing to pay for it? Can you afford not to do it? Those are the questions I'd be asking. So guys, I hope you were blessed by this. Again, if you, if you wanna just talk about your business and ways you can improve your SEO, I would love to just talk to you. Free consultation, no strings attached. Um, and if it works out that we end up doing business together, that'd be awesome, but uh, no hard feelings if not. So for you YouTube subscribers, uh, just leave any questions or comments uh, in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe the video. For Facebook guys, just uh, send me a private message if you're interested. And I pray that uh, you'll be blessed by the information you've learned and that you'll act on it, right? Because don't just be a hearer of the word, be a doer. God bless you guys.